Image sifting through the wreckage of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 near Bishoftu, Ethiopia, on Monday. All 157 aboard were killed. Credit Credit Malageta Ayin, Associated Press B.D. on Circe and Mike Ivezone was a lecturer interested in the effective use of computers in the classroom. The other had published papers on the challenges of teaching English as a second language in Kenya. Both excelled at teaching others to teach. The two professors at Kenyatta University in Kenya shared something else in common, they were passengers on Ethiopian Airways Flight 302, heading home after a work trip in Italy. The plane crashed on Sunday shortly after takeoff, killing all 157 people aboard and raising questions about the safety of the model of aircraft, the Boeing 737 MAX 8. Kenyatta University officials confirmed the deaths of the professors, Isaac Mwangi, a lecturer in the Department of Education, Communication and Technology, and Agnes Kathumbi, a director of teacher professional development. Dr. Mwangi wrote dissertations on using technology in secondary education and worked on projects related to integrating images and graphics into the teaching of poetry. He was diligent and proactive. All of Mugenda, a fellow professor who worked with Dr. Mwangi for more than a decade, wrote on Twitter. Drega Thumbi published dozens of papers, including one on how administrators react differently to graffiti when it's scrawled by girls instead of boys. He had received certifications in French, African storybook writing, computer studies and other areas from across the world, including institutions in Britain and Slovakia. Dr. Gathumbi was humble, supportive and hardworking, Ms. Mugenda tweeted. Aid workers were also killed in the crash. Four were employees of Catholic Relief Services, all of them Ethiopian citizens who were traveling to Nairobi for training. Sintayu Ameku was a procurement manager who left behind a wife and three daughters. Sarah Chalachu was a senior project officer for grants. Luso Alamu was a senior officer in the finance department. Gechenech Alamayu was a senior project officer for procurement and compliance. He had a wife and one daughter, although we are in mourning, we celebrate the lives of these colleagues and the selfless contributions they made to our mission. Despite the risks and sacrifices that humanitarian work can often entail, the organization said in a statement. In Nigeria, the government confirmed the death of Abio Dun Bashua, a former ambassador who had been working with the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. He joined the Nigerian Foreign Service in 1976 and worked in several countries, including Austria, Ivory Coast, and Iran, according to a statement from the Nigerian Foreign Ministry. He also worked with the United Nations on peacekeeping operations and climate change issues. A day after the crash, a somber mood engulfed the United Nations headquarters in Nairobi, as politicians, environmentalists and government officials gathered for a major United Nations meeting on the environment, a destination for many people aboard the flight. At least 22 people who worked for United Nations affiliated agencies were aboard the flight. One was Joanna Toole, a United Nations fisheries consultant from southwest England, who two days before she boarded the flight tweeted that she was happy to be among an increasing number of women working for the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Great to be part of the growing number of women working on fisheries issues, she wrote, adding a hashtag referring to International Women's Day. The crash of a flight that had been nicknamed the UN shuttle, because of how often United Nations staff members take it, has also highlighted the organization's work in some of the world's most troubled regions, from South Sudan to North Korea. The United Nations said its staff members on the flight had worked with several agency programs and affiliated organizations, as well as United Nations offices in Kenya and Somalia. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, offered heartfelt condolences to the families and loved ones of the United Nations staff members who died in the crash. He also said in an email to staff that flags at United Nations offices would fly at half-mast on Monday to honor the victims. Image delegates at the United Nations Environment Assembly in Nairobi, Kenya, observing a moment of silence on Monday for the victims of an Ethiopian Airlines flight that crashed a day earlier. 
credit Bosratner, Reuters The World Food Program said seven of its staff members had died in the crash, the most of any United Nations organization. The program's work focuses on widespread hunger caused by war or instability in Nigeria, South Sudan and Yemen, among other countries. As we mourn, let us reflect that each of these WFP colleagues were willing to travel and work far from their homes and loved ones to help make the world a better place to live, David Beasley, the head of the program, said in a statement. That was their calling, as it is for the rest of the WFP. Family, the World Food Program victims included Ekdo Adhikari of Nepal, who had worked for the program in Ethiopia, Michael Ryan of Ireland, who had helped Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh prepare for seasonal monsoons, and Jen Jen Huang of China, who had worked in Pyongyang, the North Korean capital. I cannot imagine the loss felt by your loved ones, especially your son, one of Ms. Huang's colleagues, Faiza Tangle, wrote on Twitter. Other victims of the crash had been traveling to United Nations events. One was Sebastiano Tusa, an underwater archaeologist from Italy who had been traveling to Kenya for a UNESCO conference about safeguarding underwater cultural heritage in Eastern Africa. Others, including Ms. Tool, were traveling to the United Nations Environment Assembly, a meeting in Kenya this week focusing on issues like sustainable development and environmental challenges related to poverty, natural resources and waste management. Another person traveling to that gathering was Victor Sang, a gender expert from Hong Kong who worked for the United Nations Environment Program in Nairobi. According to his biography on the Environment Program website, Mr. Sang had worked in Chad, Ethiopia, Panama and South Sudan. A Twitter account that appears to be Mr. Tang say that while his profession was working on sustainable development, his passion was camping with his two-year-old son in the family's garden. His penultimate Twitter post appears to show him dancing with colleagues on Valentine's Day to celebrate sustainable development. Victor was so dedicated, and a dear colleague, one of his former colleagues in Nairobi, Una Tully, wrote on Twitter. Ms. Tool, the fisheries expert from England, had been traveling to the Environment Assembly to represent the Food and Agriculture Organization's Fisheries and Aquaculture Department. Manuel Berenge, the department's director, wrote on Twitter. Ms. Tool, 36, was from Exmouth, in the southwestern English region of Devon. The Exmouth Journal reported that she had attended a local community college before studying animal behavior at the university level. Everybody was very proud of her and the work she did. We're still in a state of shock, her father, Adrian Tool, told the local news site Devon Live. Joanna was genuinely one of those people who you never heard a bad word about, Ms. Tool, who had kept homing pigeons and pet rats as a child, often posted on social media about initiatives to protect animals from marine pollution and make the fishing industry more environmentally friendly. Her father retweeted her penultimate post, about her friend who was paddleboarding around the Maldives to raise money for turtles affected by derelict fishing gear. Mr. Tool's next retweet was of a post on the same day by the Dalai Lama, the exiled Tibetan spiritual leader, We won't bring about peace in the world merely by praying for it, we have to take steps to tackle the violence and corruption that disrupt peace, the Dalai Lama wrote. We can't expect change if we don't take action, Elsie Chen and Luz Ding contributed reporting.